got the Martin back in my hands. Love it. That's a great sounding guitar, dude. It is great sounding. I just keep trying to figure out how to get it to sound even greater over video. You know? Yeah. It's my quest. Do you have a pickup in that thing? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I had a pickup put in it, but you know, for me, miking just doesn't work because I mean, it's all great and it would sound so much better, but I'm so OCD the way it is trying to set a mic in and then having to sit a certain way and adjusting and tweaking knobs. It's easier if I just get all that stuff out of my brain because it, it. it overtakes me. So, well, test, test, test. Can you hear me? Okay, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. I can. Your volume is a little bit, maybe I just need to turn mine down a little bit. There we go. Can you do a check again? Check, one, two, check. Yeah, sounds good on my end. Okay, perfect. Guys, thank you for being here. Um, we're doing another one of these acoustic guitar workshops. Um, this, I'm Dan Denley, founder of Guitar Zoom, and this is my good friend, Steve Stein. Hello. And Steve is going to walk you through. Today, we're going to be talking about something called, uh, what Steve calls the bouncing technique. The old bouncing lift and shift technique for changing chords. A lot of guitar players have issues of changing chords and uh, hopefully today will help you if you want to learn that. Keep watching if you want to learn it even faster. You can go to guitarzoom.com and check out Steve's new course called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. It's an entire course. <laughs> it will teach you all this stuff in detail. So also guys, make sure that you hit the old subscribe button and make sure that you um, post in your comments, questions, all that in the chat or the comments wherever you happen to be watching this. We will post these to the YouTube channel and uh, we'll create a nice little acoustic guitar workshop playlist for you so you can watch all the ones. So if you missed any of the ones, don't worry. You can always go back and watch them. And uh, thank you for being here with us. If you want to get notification of the next one that we're going to be doing, make sure you hit subscribe and notify. That way you get the notice um, again. And all of this that we're going to be talking about today is just a little piece of the big pie, which is in Steve's course called Acoustic Guitar. It's now available at Guitar Zoom, and it's, uh, it's an A to Z guide on everything acoustic. So you might want to check that out if you're into acoustic guitar. All right, Steve, the bouncing technique, lift and shift. <laughs> yeah. So basically, if you think about it, when people first start learning how to play, you know, like my experience was I had a book, I had a Mel Bay book that I was learning how to play. And yep. so I'd learn a chord. And then that was it. Like I'd memorize what a G chord looked like or a D chord or whatever. And then that was it. And then I would learn a strumming pattern. And the hard part that I had was, it seemed like when I would play, I would play like these prescribed strumming patterns. <laughs> And then when I wanted to shift, I'd have to stop strumming and then move over to the next chord. You know, I'd be staring at it, move over to the next chord. And so I developed these bad habits of having to stop every time I wanted to shift between chords. Mm -hmm. I, and I think the reason is, is because the weird thing about guitar is that your right hand and your left hand really don't get along. They're really not friends when you're a guitar player. They're really doing two different things at the same time. Even though when you watch somebody, it seems like everything's seamless and that sort of thing. But they're really not. Your brain is, is working overtime. So what I, I thought of, and then it, it just became very, very popular with my teaching, is a technique called bouncing. And what you do is you take whatever you're working on, whether it's a chord or a scale or whatever it might be, and you eliminate the picking or the strumming entirely from the situation and you just focus on the fretting hand or the cording hand. So for instance, if I was, um, if I was gonna make, uh, let's just say it's a, a, an A chord, right? Three in a row. So, and again, whatever fingers you normally use, but A is pretty easy because all three fingers are kind of lined up. The hard part about it is trying to fit them all in this little fret, but the bigger picture is, is that I've gotta, I gotta get to that chord as quickly as possible. So I don't want to build it in a group of three like that, right? If I'm using three different fingers, I don't want to take the time to do this. What I want to be able to do is make the chord at once. And if I think about it, I'm always coming from the bottom side of the guitar here. So as I lift up, what I want to do is create the chord that I want before I ever get to the guitar and then set it down. And the way you do that is through a, a technique I call bouncing, which is you, you make the chord, whatever chord it is you're working on, then you pretend like your fingers are super glued Okay, stress pretend, 
okay? You pretend like your fingers are super glued, don't actually do it. And then what you do is you pick your fingers up, but maintain that shape. So don't just pick them up and do this. Like if you're making a, pick it up and hold that shape like this, and then set it back down. And to do this, you actually need to be looking at your guitar. Like I've always called this the rock star syndrome, which people get at an early age where they're not supposed to look at your guitar. And I always use the analogy of driving, right? You should probably keep your road, your eyes on the road. You don't close your eyes or, you know, the same thing with guitar playing. When you play, it's okay to look at your guitar. You want to make sure that you're doing things right. You also want to make a visual picture in your mind of the situation that you're finding yourself in. So if I'm making that A, I want to look at my fingers. I want to make sure I'm on the right strings. I want to think about how this feels. Then I pick it up and I hold it. I hover over the strings and hold it and then I set it back down. And what I'm actually doing here is developing muscle memory. I'm training mm -hmm. my hand, my fingers, all my muscles, right, all my tendons to understand this motion because if you're going to become a guitar player, you're going to play this A chord 75 billion times before you're six feet under, okay? It never goes away. <laughs> or a D chord or a G chord or whatever it might be. You play them over and over and over again. And so you don't want to keep recreating it every time you go to make it go, what is it, right? Where's my book? Let me find it. You don't want to do that. You want to think about it in your head. So I tell people, you got to visualize. The first thing you got to do is visualize. If you can see it, you can play it. You might not play it fast, but you can play it. So you make that chord, you lift it up, you set it back down. You lift it up, you set it back down. You lift it up, and you do this over and over. How many times? I don't know until you get good at it. But every day you can practice this because two things. Number one, when you're making this chord, don't make it into a contest of speed. Like it's not like how fast can you lift up your hand and set it down. It has nothing to do with that. Actually, the slower you go, the better because you're feeling your, your fingers right now as you hover. Now they're doing the muscle memory. When you set it down, you can go and eat a cheeseburger and nothing's happening over here. Okay, but when you mm -hmm. lift it up, now you've got to train your hand to hold that shape. Okay, that's the first thing. So if you think about it, if I was going to make A and I'm here, as soon as I pick up my hand, I go and make this shape. Mm. So now I can set it down. Okay, so it's that repetition. That's the second thing is just understanding that you've got to do it over and over and over and don't overwhelm yourself. Just like we could go off for an hour talking about overwhelming yourself but don't learn 17 chords and none of them are very fast and none of them are very clean it doesn't do you any good start with one chord and get really good at being able to manipulate it right you'll notice again i'm not strumming strumming is something else we're going to talk about but strumming is another part of your brain that's doing something completely different what you need to do is learn how to make this a chord okay or this d chord or this G chord. And of course, some of these chords are gonna be harder than other chords because like, if we look at the G chord, okay, I'm making a four finger G. It doesn't matter how you make your G, but that's what I'm doing, okay? If I lift this, if I bounce it, this is harder for me to hold than the A chord, right? The mm -hmm. A chord was pretty easy because it's all kind of right there. But G, I've got two fingers down here, I've got two fingers up here. So it requires a little more time and effort to get comfortable with that. So as painstaking as it seems and as frustrating as it might seem, you want to practice this muscle memory, this bouncing over and over and over to train yourself how to make that chord quickly. So that's the first step before we get to lift and shift. That's the first step is just learning how to do that bouncing. Very cool. Very cool. So the whole idea is that you're training your muscle memory to actually make the chord before you ever have to press down the string. Yeah. So you think of it as in transition. Like when you want a chord, which is what the next part is going to be, the lift and shift. But when you want a chord, you've already thought about what it is, hopefully instantaneously, right? If somebody says D, you've already thought about it in your head. So now your hand responds by making that. If you have to process the information, if you have to process what it looks like, and then your digits have to process formulating that by the time you've made the chord the song you're trying to play is already three measures ahead of you mm -hmm. so the trick is is you've got to you've got to visualize that chord and then be able to create that chord very 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 quickly and it's not that hard to do once you've practiced it enough but you have to stop thinking 
like for me, the guitar, there's so many elements of, you know, when you watch somebody play again, it all seems very easy. People always go, well, guitar playing seemed easy before I started practicing, right? <laughs> There's so much that's going into one thing, even though it doesn't really seem like it. Like I always tell people, there's really groups of three when you're trying to play a song. Your chords and the knowledge of your chords and the ability to make those chords. And then your strumming and your ability to make the song sound real and authentic when you strum and not just like, you know, a, a piece of plastic, but it's got to sound real to a listener. And then the third thing is the ability to actually memorize song structures and understand that this chord is going to move to this chord and, and that equals what we call a verse or a bridge or a chorus or and it gets repeated so many times those are kind of the three elements that we take for granted and just assume that it's all going to work together if we just practice these things we need to practice them in individually all three of these things need to be studied individually that's a great point i think people get so overwhelmed with uh the rhythm, the melody, the chord, the solo, the tempo, and you're trying to do 10 different things at once. And if you break each of those elements down into their smallest part and just focus on one thing at a time, because I know this isn't the topic of this video, but I love your scratching technique where you just show people like, forget about melody, forget about the chord, forget about all of that. Just get the rhythm down because if you can't make your right hand play the rhythm correctly, you have no chance of fretting a chord and doing the, that thing at the same time. Right. right well, now. and that's 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 a really important point because chords without strumming, chords sound like this. <laughs> they sound like nothing. There's nothing happening. Your strumming hand, I don't want to say right hand because you might be playing left-handed, but your strumming hand is what adds an element of real and Again, I use the word professional. When I say professional, I don't mean it in a, you know, you, you're the best at whatever or you're making money. I don't mean that. What I mean is authentic. When you play, people listen and go, yep, that's what it's supposed to be or that sounds great, right? You can always tell when you go into a music store or, or whatever it might be, you can tell the players that play and you can tell the players that are practicing. Mm -hmm. You can tell the difference. Um, and I don't know why exactly other than the fact really of confidence and that confidence comes through that repetition. So that's what I want you to understand about bouncing. That's just so important is it's not how quickly can I get done with this so I can get to the next thing. And then how quickly, quickly can I get done with that so I can get to the next thing? Because I understand that enthusiasm and I think it's awesome. But if you don't fully develop the first thing, it's like building a house. If you don't fully develop the, the ground the, the, the initial elements of that house, it's ultimately going to crumble at some point. You're going to wind right. up having problems with the foundation. So, you know, if you really develop, and again, everybody's on a different journey when it comes to guitar, but if you develop these, a few chords really well, you can play literally thousands of songs, but you got to be able to move them. Like, like A is, is absolutely essential, D and G and those sorts of things. So that's what bouncing is. And uh, that's, that's why point. learning how to visualize these are so important. I love it, Steve. Hey, I noticed that we're getting um, more and more people piling into this. So I want to uh, just welcome everybody onto this uh, session that we're doing today, the Acoustic Guitar Workshop. Uh, if you're just joining us, what we're talking about today is bouncing. And uh, it's essentially a way, a way to move and change chords without getting um, like derailed from your song that you're playing and doing it effortlessly and without hitting dead notes and that kind of thing. Steve's talking about the bouncing technique and we're going to get into lift and shift here in a second. I want to mention a couple of resources for you. First of all, this recording that we're making for you now or this session that we're doing is uh, going to be available for you after the, after the live session. It'll be available for you on the YouTube channel. So uh, there's Guitar Zoom YouTube channel and there's the Steve, Steve Stein YouTube channel. You want to subscribe to both of those, turn your notifications on so you can get a notification of the next time we do these. The playlist will be there for you. Just look for Acoustic uh, Guitar Workshop. And so there's going to be probably, I don't know, eight, ten videos there in that playlist for you that you can check out. If you missed any, you can go back and watch them. Uh, if you enjoy what we're talking about today, stick with us. Uh, if you would like to learn even faster um, and go through everything step by step from the ground up on acoustic guitar, Steve has a new course. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein, and it's available for you at guitarzoom.com. 
Um, oh, one, one other thing I did want to mention is that we also have a podcast, guys, that we were trying to get off the ground. So if you would go over to the old wherever you listen to podcast and subscribe to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, that would be awesome. Uh, and yeah, so let's continue on with the old bouncing technique, Steve. Okay, so the next thing we would do is we would talk about what I refer to as lift and shift, which is really bouncing, but it's bouncing between chords. So if you think about it, if I was making, um, let's say I was doing an, an A chord, for instance, and I wanted to go to a D chord, okay? Again, my problem when I was younger was if I wanted to go to D, I'd have to stop everything I was doing and then build the D, and then I would start strumming. And then if I want to go back to A, I would have to stop what I was doing because my brain wasn't able to process strumming and chording and then moving at the same time. All mm -hmm. of this, it was just too much. So that's when I got the idea, well, I'm just going to practice one thing, um, which is kind of what led to my whole getting into teaching and all that was my ability to kind of decipher and analyze the situations that I found myself in. So with the A chord, for instance, if I want to go to D, obviously the first thing I need to do is I need to practice bouncing A over and over and over, do that whole process, but I need to do the same thing with D, right? So I need to practice D over and over and over. So if you come across a song and you want to learn how to play that song, you need to look at all of those chords and decide, am I ready for this song, right? And if not, what do I need to do to get ready for this song? Like. If it's got a chord I don't know, well, there's no reason for me to even try and play along with the song right now. What I need to do is just stop, assess my situation, and go, okay, I need to practice that chord. The other chords I feel pretty good with, or the tempo's a little fast, or whatever. And then as you get better at this, when you start trying to play along with things, you start playing songs that you like, and you get shut down, mentally you shut down or physically you shut down, you become aware of that instead of going, well, I suck and I can't do this. You go, okay, so why did that happen? And what do I need to do to fix this? And do I want to spend the time fixing this? Do I want to go on to another song that's a little easier? Or do I want to try and fix this situation? And the beauty is when you fix those situations, of course, you're not fixing it for that song. You're fixing it for that song and a thousand other songs generally, mm -hmm. right? So with lift and shift, what I'm doing is I know I have to practice A over and over and over. I know I have to practice D over and over and over. And of course, D is probably a little bit more difficult because the shape is a little harder, right? The lift and shift is when I want to go from A to D, as I lift my hand in the air, as soon as I lift it, I shift to the D shape. Mm. And then I set it down. Or if I want to go to G, I've already made G before I ever get there. So I'm not waiting until I get to that measure one or beat number one or whatever it is. And now I have to create because I'm going to be late every time. Right. Instead, what I do is as I lift my fingers up, I shift to the next shape and then simply set it down to wherever it is I'm going. Okay. That is super cool. So you actually make the chord in the air before you even hit the strings. Yeah. And, and, and players, obviously any, any player that's been playing for a while does this. It's just when, like I always say, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're just learning how to do this and you, you've you never thought about it before, you have to think about the fact that what's happening over here with this cording hand has to happen comfortably. It has to be a smooth transition. And if it's taking up all of your brain power to think about moving from point A to point B, whatever those are, how are you going to think about your song? Or how are you going to strum? Like all of these things can't happen mechanically when you're not able to concentrate on all of them at the same time. If you have to put all your brain power into one thing, you can't think about the other things. So, so much of guitar playing is that you have to build automation. You have to build comfortability. Automation is understanding and being able to do something very well. Well, that's comfortability, right? If I want to go from D to G, whatever it is I want, if I have to spend all of my time thinking about this, how can I think about this, right? Or how can I think about the chord changes of the song that I'm trying to play? You know, if I'm trying to go... Um, right? Okay, there's a lot of little mechanisms that are going on at the same time as I play whatever it is I'm doing, whether I'm picking or strumming. So each one of those pieces has to be practiced. And that's why I'm saying bouncing and lifting and shifting doesn't just have to apply to a chord. 
it can apply to a concept. Like if I wanted to play a scale, for instance, or a lick, I might go and just practice going. Now, of course, I can use that as a technique exercise as well, but I'm developing the understanding in this hand of what needs to be done. Then this hand needs to come in and start joining it and develop it and all that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. I love it. This is awesome, Steve. One of the things I thought of when, you, uh, when you're talking about the lift and shift technique is that one of the things I love about you is that <clears throat> you can play and teach. There's a lot of guys that I remember when I was a young learning guitarist and I was trying to find out like, geez, you know, gee, man, like, how did you do that? A lot of players, they can do it, but they can't explain how they do it. Sure. Right. They just, they do something. And so I, I'm sure there are lots of guitar players out there who naturally do this lift and shift thing and it never registers the registers to them to, to break it down in a way that you can explain it to somebody else because they're not teachers, they're just players. But you're a player and a teacher which I think is why you've been so incredibly successful is your ability to take something and then explain it in a way that anybody can understand. And this lift and shift technique, like I've really never thought about that before, but that's what you're doing in the air is you're actually making that G shape before you ever get to the chord. You're making the D shape before you ever get to the, the string. You're right. doing it in the air versus placing each individual string uh, finger on the string because that won't work. You don't have time for that. Right. And, and again, if you, take a, if you take a bird's eye view, if you step back, you go, wow, that seems pretty obvious. Well, it is obvious. But if you don't think about it, because I, I think what makes some of us as guitar players very good at, like, I've always been really good at being able to dissect a situation and then rebuild it again. You know, learning how to play songs by ear is how I grew up and being able to listen to a song, figure out what was going on, grab my guitar, start figuring out, and then practice whatever needed to be practiced, you know, and in my life, there have been times, you know, the you play in a band and you're going to be playing next Friday and you have however many songs to learn. You can't go, I, I didn't learn them or I can't play them. You just have to show <laughs> up and do what you're told, right? Um, or, you know, you get in a situation where you jump on a, a tour with a band or you're going to do some recording with a band or whatever it might be and they give you something either you're able to do what the job is, regardless of the limited amount of time, or you can't and you don't get that call again. So, right, right. you know, you just, you just learn how to break things down to their simplest form and figure out what your problem is and then fix that problem. Now, some, some situations, it's not like you can fix them in a day, right? I mean, if you, if you literally just started learning how to play guitar, and you're learning how to play this G chord, don't feel like all of a sudden just because of bouncing and lifting and shifting, you should be perfect by the G by tomorrow, right? But you understand what needs to go into the, the process to develop that G chord, right? Strumming is not going to help your G whatsoever. You can make a G chord and strum it for an hour and a half, and that's great. You're going to learn all kinds of things about strumming, but your, your hand isn't doing anything. It's just sitting there, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I literally could take, you know, a, a chimpanzee's fingers and put them on the guitar that doesn't mean the chimpanzee is figuring out how to make a g chord it's just you're just doing what you're told right so you have to understand that each time what you're trying to do is develop each one of these individual things so they can happen as a group but they're really not they're really not uh what's the word i'm looking for they're in sync with each other, but they're not hap It's not a synonymous thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. Like when I strum, I'm trying to develop something that is engaging to someone to listen to. But at the same time, I've got to move these chords around at various points in time, and they've got to move kind of seamlessly along with what's happening with my strum or my picking or whatever. And that's kind of what defines a guitar player. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's not how fast you are, or how knowledgeable you are, or all these other things. You can do as much or as little of any of those. It's when you grab the guitar and you start playing, does it sound like music? Or right, does right. it sound like you're practicing? Right. And that confidence level is a thing I think that separates 
someone that you really enjoy listening to versus someone that you kind of almost feel nervous when you're listening to them because you're wondering if they're going to go off the rails and make a mistake and embarrass well, themselves. And and that's right. And confidence comes with two things. Number one, developing those things that you're in need of. And number two, <laughs> dismantling everything that you don't need. Like not waking up every day worried about what everybody else is doing and what you're supposed to be doing to be cool. It's not about any of that. It's about understanding what it is that you're trying to build, the house that you're trying to build, not the house that your neighbor has, the house that you're trying to build and develop those elements. And the rest of it is, is either completely wiped out or it's at least postponed. Like you understand, okay, this is something I want to learn how to do, but right now, that's not where my time is best served. Right now, my time is best served building something that's cohesive and, and is connected somehow. You know, that's how you keep kind of moving up. And I know that's probably raises a lot of questions because what is that? What is the next thing, right? And it's different for everybody. I'm just saying that, that confidence, like, and I love to, like, again, whoever it might be, Bob Dylan, right? Or whoever, it doesn't matter. Insert whatever name of person you like there. But they're not concerned about being somebody else. They just wake up every day and they're them, right? That's the cool thing is, is that, you know, the further I go down this, this industry, like when I, ten, you know, 15 years ago, I knew nobody in the industry. Now, Benelli, I think there were like 25,000 people there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Steve and I are walking across the floor and, uh, you know, we can't take five steps without somebody stopping and saying, hey, Steve Stein, can I, you know, get your autograph? Can I get a picture with you? And just your, your um, willingness to take time to talk to the CEO of Ibanez or the guy that watched some YouTube videos, you treat everybody the same. And I, I'm, I'm just, I'm giving you a compliment. This is a completely off script here. Don't mean to throw you for a loop because I know you're a super humble guy. But for people that don't know Steve Stein, they see your videos, they see your courses, all of that stuff. But I know Steve Stein, the person, and uh, we've worked together for many years now. And being with him, especially out in public, Steve is exactly what you perceive him to be. On this screen, he's the same guy in front of this camera as he is off camera. He's just as comfortable talking to uh, some famous guitar player or, um, or working with, you know, someone that is just off the street that just says, Hey, I've watched your YouTube videos. Can I get a quick picture? You always take time to, to say, you know, thank you. And thank you so much for watching my stuff and how can I help you? It's just, it's really an authentic thing. And I'm really happy just to even be able to um, work with you and, and uh, yeah, sorry, I was getting a little nostalgic there for a second. <laughs> well, no, I appreciate that. I mean, and the, the truth is, is that, you know, you, you have to be thankful. I mean, first of all, you got to be thankful for being alive, you know, and the fact that you have the opportunity to, to, to learn how to play guitar, or learn how to do whatever it is you want to do. That's entirely up to you. You know, I understand being obsessive about guitar playing. You know, I've spent many, many years and countless hours practicing and thinking and studying and traveling and you know I mean when I could have been doing a million other things that's what I was doing um, so I'm very thankful that I get to do what I do and I wouldn't get to do what I do if people didn't enjoy what I did or or benefit from what I did so you know there's not a day that I don't wake up thankful for the opportunity to to do this so I love it Speaking of guys, if you are uh, just joining us or watching this, you're enjoying it. Uh, we're talking about the bouncing technique that Steve has developed over the years of changing chords, this lift and shift technique, we're calling it. Um, training your fingers to do what you tell them to do and to create muscle memory. If you enjoy this, keep watching. If you'd like to go even deeper and learn this stuff even faster, you can check out Steve's new guitar course. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. It's available at guitarzoom.com and it's at the complete A to Z guide. Uh, one thing about that course, guys, that you might want to, uh, if you already own some of Steve's courses, some of the courses like theory and soloing and whatnot, you really need to kind of start at the beginning and go straight through. You don't always have to do that, but sometimes it's a good idea, especially with something like theory, because it's going to be hard to understand, you know, uh, what a dominant seventh chord is until you understand where a dominant seventh comes from. 
uh, which scale it is at the fifth quarter, the major scale, et cetera, whatever, you know, but with this course, the acoustic guitar course, this is something you can jump around in. So if you're like, man, I just want to get my strumming down. There's a section for that. If you're like, I want to learn bar chords, there's a section for that. You're like, I want to learn some simple licks on the acoustic guitar and the pentatonic scale. There's a section for that. If you want to learn this bouncing technique, the, the ocean strumming technique that Steve has, different um, chord progressions, it's all there. And you can jump around in that course wherever you want. You don't have to go through the whole thing. And if you just get like one thing from the course this, that turns a light bulb on for you, it's probably worth your entire investment. So you can check that out. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein at Guitar Zoom. What else you got for us, my friend? That's it. I just wanted to show those two techniques in this lesson and kind of let everybody study that a little bit. And, uh, and then we'll come back and throw something else. Yeah, bouncing. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe and hit notify if you want to get notified of the next acoustic guitar workshop session we do. Remember that all the recordings will be available for you on the YouTube channel. And if you want to get the course, it's at guitarzoom.com. It's called Acoustic Guitar. Steve, thank you so much, my friend. It's always a pleasure. And thank all of you for being here. Please join us on the next session and we'll see you then. All right, everybody. Take care. Talk to you soon. Thanks. See you, bud.